mama. There we go. Welcome to Iceland, where we're here for the first ever time, really, uh, in both myself personally and Ball in Europe, to see the Icelandic Premier League take place. We're going to see Stjarn and the home side here take on the reigning champions, Valor, both them Reykjavik teams, both them multi-sport clubs. But you don't come to Iceland just for basketball, so we're going to take a bit of an adventure first. We're going to see some of the sights, some of the sounds, and maybe have a little bit to drink. What do we call these again, Kevin? Uh, the fumaroles, so you're saying. These are awesome. I found it myself, but that's cliche. Yeah, this is something else. <laughs> Holy shit. Well, uh, that's a bit, you know, something. Right there below me, that is boiling at some absolutely mental temperature. Obviously, it's only hitting 100 degrees with this water, but below it, you're talking up to 1,000 degrees from the heat source itself. Welcome to Iceland. <laughs> Came along to see a really cool church, and hey, there's a couple getting married. How's that? Alrighty. So, welcome to Gulfoss, uh, the waterfalls here, and uh, they're very, very big. We're gonna go down a bit closer and get a look, but yeah, pretty freaking awesome. Alrighty. It's loud. Uh, I can feel the grade. Kevin's not really enjoying being here, but that's fine. He's enjoying me at the border, but he's not enjoying me in the video, just to be clear. But uh, this is a pretty cool way to do a basketball trip, is all I can say. Nice harmless little stream, right? Yeah, that water's boiling. Welcome to Geezer. Oh, mama! There we go! Worth waiting for. So we brought you on some of the journey around Iceland. Let's actually hear from people to tell you about basketball in this beautiful country. Valder, first of all, thanks for talking to us, because I know you're not used to meeting Irish guys who aren't Taiwo in this league. So first of all, tonight's game, great result for you guys. First home win of the season, first home game, first win. Yeah, I mean, just uh, I think it was a, a good game. Like uh, both teams fighting hard, like a lot of foul calls, a lot of physicality and, and we, we, we just lucky to get, get, 
get ahead of, with a win here. And that's one of the things that stood out to me, because my first time seeing a league game in Iceland is it's so fast and so physical at the same time. Is that the norm for people who haven't seen Icelandic basketball before? Yeah, super energetic league and, and players play super physical here. And I mean, I think that's one of the like values of uh, Icelandic uh, sports people is, is toughness. So basically, whoever comes in is, is, is trying to play tough and is ready to play physical. And like you, you mentioned that toughness, because I remember your road to Europe in 2015, the national team, and I remember seeing you all play there. Like, I'm from a nation bigger than Iceland, but it's never been close to Eurobasket. Like, and obviously your football team has had the success. Why do we see Iceland so small, like basically performing against the odds so well, particularly in basketball? We're Vikings, man. That's just how it is. We're Vikings, like, we, we know hardship, like the winter is long. Uh, we need to fight through it, stay mentally tough. And I mean, I think, uh, yeah, I think in, in Iceland, like, there is strong and athletic people. And obviously, you spent your last two years before this out in Ulm, a couple of great years, obviously, including that championship run. Uh, like, what was it like for you having that experience and what's it been like coming back here since? Uh, I mean, learned a lot in Ulm, like, uh, my IQ improved a lot, uh, being around, like, the elite level players and elite level coaches, uh, so uh, I learned a lot, both offensively, defensively, matured as a person, so, I mean, that of course helped me, I mean, I know the league here, uh, have what's it, since I was five years old, but... Uh, it helps me for sure for everything in basketball in the future. And I gotta ask you before I let you go about the crowd tonight. They were really loud throughout. Like it's a great support to get out here. Yeah, I mean, uh, amazing support and and I mean, just very happy that we had it. I mean, uh, you know, I I got tied to Iceland. I coached him before in in Tintastol of North the first time. Of he course, got yes. <laughs> so I mean, I love time and great person, great player. Uh, uh, and so, like, I just want to ask you one more thing, because about the coaching and your future with this, like, where, how far do you think you can bring Starn on this season, and why should people come to get a Starn on game? Uh, I mean, I think we have the level to to uh, go all the way. To do that, we need to be mentally tough. We need to play with intensity, uh, and, and we need to stay focused through everything we face. And hopefully, we can get stronger throughout the season and and build something good here. This right here is not just a bunch of rocks. This is the continental divide where two plates do their thing, smack together, separate, do it again. And this is what we get. And as you can see with the two boys up ahead, you're about to see another waterfall. But kind of mad when you realize the power basically of a planet. So the thing about this club is, they're not just a basketball club. This is multi-sport in the truest sense. There's football. I saw them play against my football team, UCD, two nights before this basketball game. They've got handball, they've got volleyball, they've got gymnastics, they've got swimming, they've even got karate and taekwondo. Multi-sports is the way it is in this country, and it's just so great to see all this coming together. The gymnastics just over there be taking place while we're here for the basketball. This is Sadian Foss, uh, another waterfall, and I'm about to go behind it. So, uh, kind of hard to describe, it's inside a waterfall. It's uh, very wet, obviously, but not as wet as you might think. Uh, yeah, and uh, just extraordinary, really. Just uh, Although, it was meant to be sunnier today. Uh, we, we saw the sun briefly, and then the sun went away, so I think it was trying to trick us. Shut down all flights in Europe a few years ago for quite a while. 
This one up behind me is about 200 feet high, and we're going to be walking over there up uh, very, very steep steps all the way to the top. So, uh, well, I want the fittest guy going, am I? But uh, yeah, it's going to be worth the view. So, you see that little white bit around there? That's the glazer, top of the volcano, as mentioning. And we've come all the way from down there. Absolutely stunning. I am so dead. Totally worth it. Of course, I didn't come here without finding an Irish angle. Tywo Badmus, Ireland international, superstar here in the league in Iceland. Got to talk to him. Let's hear from the great guy. Uh, yeah, I mean, I like it here. Um, I'm used to the league. And, uh, you know, it's a very competitive league and it's, it's growing every year. So, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be here. And, and how did you first even come across like Iceland as a place to land? Because you're from Dublin, you grew up in London, you played college in the US, none of which are Iceland. So how did you land here? Uh, my Asian, you know, the basketball world, uh, it takes you anywhere. I could be in China tomorrow, I could be in Israel another day, you know, it, I could be anywhere. So the basketball world is, world is pretty small and big at the same time. So. I don't think, because like, even this country, like I've experienced that in my few days here, like because you get this incredible nature and then you come into the gym and it's just like, like any other gym in Europe, obviously with its own flavor. That mm -hmm. must be kind of cool for you having those two worlds colliding. Yeah, you know, I'm a, I'm a traveler. I like to travel. I like to experience different cultures. And this is a culture that, you know, I've been with for the past three seasons and I, I enjoy it. So. And have you tried to convince any of the other Irish lads, come on, come over to Reykjavik, we'll have a bit of a laugh. Like, have you tried to convince any of them to make the move yet? I've tried, actually. Uh, there's some that have been close, but they haven't. Hopefully in the future. And like obviously when it comes to sort of you know the next couple of months we're looking forward to seeing you back in Dublin for the two men's home internationals How are you feeling just going ahead towards them? Yeah, I'm super excited for that you know um, uh, I love being with the with the guys and uh, we've got a good team we've got a good shot and you know we just got to make it a ball and, and compete And the last thing I want to ask you is like for people who don't get what basketball is like in Iceland describe your experience of it and how you find the game here the game is um, it's a mix between uh, European style and, uh, and American style. It's an uh, up and down pace. It's probably one of the fastest uh, pace leagues in the world. And uh, it's very entertaining. Next up was the wreck of a DC-3, although we're seeing here, of course, uh, the type of the volcano, a better view than from earlier in the video. When we went to this wreck, the plan was to keep doing what I had done in the earlier parts of the video, which was, of course, record the sound at, with nature like letting you hear just how wild and loud it got unfortunately it got so wild and so loud that that just ceased to be an option it was so windy out there that the idea of putting any audio over it even if i had remembered my uh, noise cancelling stuff would have just been pointless so as you can see it's become a tourist site all seven who were on board this flight when it went down in the early 70s in 1973 they all survived Obviously, the combination of the elements here in Iceland, but also graffiti and other tourist-related damage have not been great, I think it'd be fair to say, to the shell of what's remaining. But I suppose the saddest part is that even though all seven people on board the flight that day in 1973 survived, and as well survived, of course, what came afterwards in terms of having to wait for rescue, because it's a good two-hour hike to the road in good conditions from where these pictures are coming, while everybody survived the landing, 47 years later in 2010, two tourists lost their lives while coming out in conditions that just frankly were abominable and didn't survive. <laughs>
So again, you're seeing a few stills here. This is the limit, I suppose you could say, of the northern lights that we got. And even then, there's a qualifier because this was using the night mode on my camera with the naked eye. The slight green shimmers you can see, frankly, weren't even that obvious. Like we got these bare, bare disruptions in the uh, night sky. We've gotten very lucky with the actual uh, clarity of the sky. It was really clear when we went out uh, to have a look. But unfortunately, just there wasn't that much activity of course, in the days afterwards, this was the last full night I had with my two traveling companions. Uh, in the days afterwards, there was uh, some good activity, but unfortunately, we missed out. But that's more of a reason to go back again in the future. Lebowski Bar here in Reykjavik, and this is a white Russian. The Dudabides. The Dudabides. So that's it here from Sterna, and it's it for me from Iceland. I've got a wedding tomorrow after recording this, so if you're seeing this and I'm saying this outro, it means I made it to the wedding on time, and it means I didn't get in any trouble. But listen, thank you all for joining us. As you can tell, I really had a great time in Iceland. The basketball, though, while not too much actual action in this video, really, really great experience, and I definitely recommend come and seeing a, a game in the league here and visiting Iceland. Like, what a way to double up. Like, you get to go see a really good level of basketball here, and you get to see one of the most beautiful countries I've ever seen in my life. So listen, thank you all. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And of course, I will see you soon.